How's it going everybody? It's your boy Pixelated Pat back with another episode of our Pokemon Guy Nuzlocke. Today we are taking on the first gym and I am more excited than ever to be starting my journey over here on YouTube. So the level cap going into this gym is level 13 so I'm not expecting too much difficulty since my team is within one level of the cap so let's get the first battle out of the way. So the first gym of this game uses fairy type Pokemon. I always get super pumped whenever I get to play a ROM hack with a fairy type included because I didn't get to play too much X and Y. Like, I don't even think I actually completed those games. So it's great getting to see the fairy type and getting to have the experience of battling them. Uh, it's just kind of a shame that this gym isn't later on in the run because I feel like it would be a lot of fun to see how much of a challenge higher level fairy types could be. But I guess we'll have to wait for that for another day. But yeah, I thought this gym was pretty interesting due to the way that the warps here work. It reminds me a lot of the Lost Cave located just north of Five Island in the post-game of Five Red and Leaf Green in the Sevi Islands. It's uh, where you rescue a lost NPC named Lady Selfie, who will later give you items if you can show her specific Pokemon, just like Bill's grandpa on Route 25 in the post-game of Gold, Silver, and Crystal version. Speaking of the other games, I couldn't help but to notice that the sprite for the Roma Girl is actually an edit of the last trainer sprite from Diamond, Pearl, and Platinum. As a pixel artist myself, there's nothing other more than when a ROM hack with great pixel art catches my eye, and Guy is catching it especially with all the sprites being updated to sprites from generations 4 through 6. A game doesn't need great graphics to be fun, but it certainly goes a long way in the immersion. And speaking of game design and graphics, something I've been thinking a lot about lately is creating my own ROM hack. As many of you who have been following me for a while know, I'm a pixel artist with experience in customized maps, and I can't think of anything I love more than putting my skills to the test of creating my own Pokemon region. One thing's for sure, if I did make a ROM hack, I'd make it as difficult and unforgiving as I could. Speaking of difficult and unforgiving, I think I might want to try a Kaizo run at a later point this year. For now, I kind of want to continue building my skills as a Nuzlocker before I take on something like that, because there's not a chance in hell my creative OCD would allow me to run the game over and over and over again if I kept getting wiped continuously, unless I was live streaming. So I want to build my skills as a Nuzlocker in every way I can with the goal of eventually completing a Kaizo run in one try. A uh, man can dream and dream I shall. Anyways, we're just about getting to the end of the gym trainers here before we take on the gym leader. Um, I'm glad there wasn't too many trainers in this gym because something I always get worried about is accidentally overleveling on the gym trainers whenever I bring my team within one level of the cap. And it always helps to ease that worry whenever the gym doesn't house enough trainers for more than one or two Pokemon to get a level up before the gym battle. That being said, I'm actually curious as to whether or not the designers of this game had Nuzlocke in mind when they were creating the game. I've heard lots of great things about this ROM hack from both casual and challenge fronts, so that's always a good sign. And the level cap being 13 going into the gym has potential to add another layer of challenge to the battle since you won't be able to enter the battle with your starter evolved. Anyways, getting through the obligatory pre-gym healing, if you saw my last video then you'll remember how I mentioned that turning yourself into a walking Pokemon Center is one of the most crucial steps in surviving a Nuzlocke. I realized right away in my first randomizer that resource management was going to be key in surviving the run and I'm glad that stuck with me for my 4-1 record on Instagram. And little speed up there because I was lost, but we finally made it to the first gym leader of the game, Fernando of Saris Village, who specializes in fairy types. I'm excited to get this battle out of the way since I wasn't expecting much of a challenge, and that worry was definitely warranted by the dialogue of him asking us to go easy on him. Is anyone going to tell him the rules of a Nuzlocke? Anyways, moving right along, I'll leave with none other than Fawns and Nidoran, who I named after the glorious King Fawns from the legendary Twitch Heights Pokemon run from 2014. All praise Lord Helix. Unfortunately, I'm kind of a noob. I forgot that this Nidoran came with the ability Hustle. I am so used to Poison Point that I had the idea of sending out Nidoran to poison his Pokemon, but I forgot that he came with Hustle instead, forcing me to get a chip damage KO while luckily wasting a potion along the way on a Clefairy that was more of a headache than it was worth. Yeah, honestly, I'm just glad that I learned to pay attention to the math above all else. Otherwise, I probably would have switched out from Nidoran there or possibly even lost him, but I had faith he would pull through. However, we do have to switch immediately as Fernando sends out Ralts, and I'm not going to sack anyone unless I absolutely have to. Uh, luckily, Pinky the Whisper, who I named after my good friend Pinky Pokey on Instagram, is able to come in and make quick work of the Ralts in two hits. And finally, Fernando sends out his ace, Jigglypuff. I decided to leave Pinky out since she was still on good health, but it's too bad that Nidoran is on as low health as he is because I'm sure that the poison sting he just learned boosted by the ability Hustle would make quick work of Jigglypuff. However, it's just not worth the risk, and I know that I can win with what I got, which is why I switch out to Huge Power Meryl after Jigglypuff gets a decent hit on Pinky. One bubble later, and we have officially conquered our first gym battle, the Nuzlocke. However, we still have yet to claim the badge due to Fernando one-upping Whitney by not only crying after we defeat him, but also running off. So we're going to have to cut over to Wisp Forest, but I'll be sure to upload the encounter for this area as a short, so keep your eyes peeled for that. For now, I just want to focus the video on getting the badge and the TM for it. 
Anyways, we find him hiding here in Wisp Forest, where he finally awards us with the Mystic Badge, our first gym badge of the Nuzlocke. It feels great to finally get this out of the way, and I really enjoyed the extra bit of world building introduced by us having to go to the Wisp Forest, an area you might not have otherwise visited if it weren't for its involvement in the story beat. It's also a cool way to give us access to the move Cut, the HM awarded to us by his grandpa at the daycare center. However, we still have to go get the HM after this little bit of dialogue, so we're going to have to go over to cut over to that real quick, which we will do in a moment. Anyway, shout out to everybody who made it to the end of the video. You are all awesome. And don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you never miss an upload. I'll see you guys in the next episode, and thank you.